You are listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is the love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. That's good. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast is good. I was waiting. The Energy is Love. No, you're good. I should I stay? uh... You forgot to put your watch back on. Dun, 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 dun. means that every step I did doesn't count. Every step you take doesn't count count anymore. (laughs) Your pedometer's downstairs. (laughs) (laughs) It's very sad. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that song uh, about stalking somebody? Yeah, I didn't realize that till Boy. later in life. And I'm like, oh, the '80s had so many good things, didn't they? Stalking was okay. You it could was, still it was follow a sign people. Of love, right? This is how much I love you. That's how you show people. I'll be watching you. I'll it's be creepy. Watching. <laughs> it's creepy as shit. Come out of your house. I'm there. Because <laughs> I love you. Turn this around. Is my, I'm there. This means I love you. <laughs> You look Get cute. into your car. I'm in the back seat. <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> oh my God, he so loves me. Look at he follows me everywhere just to protect me. <laughs> I should be grateful, right? I like the '80s. Yeah, yeah. We need to bring him back. <laughs> Lots of good stuff there. Yeah, it was really good. Mm. It's a safe time for women. It was a safe time for women. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. Retracted that real fast. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's a joke, folks. Craig's a stand-up comic um, in the sense that he stands up sometimes and says funny things. Do you know what's really funny about that? What's that? Is you joke so much on the podcast and you usually just let it out there and watch the people think it's real. But that one, you're like, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a joke. Yeah. Some people get your jokes. Some people don't. I think a lot of people don't. Well. Turns out. Flat Earth, a lot of people think. Yeah, a lot of people thought that we were Flat Earth believers, and we are. (laughs) (laughs) We also believe in Bigfoot. Well, I kind of do. A map of the world. And it's flat. What is something that we do believe in that people think is crazy? Oh, we're going to do that again? Uh, No. Did we Um, do it before? Yeah, Bigfoot, conspiracies. Yeah, you do kind of believe in Bigfoot. I kind of do. A lot of people think energy is crazy. I don't think people think energy is crazy. I think if people fully understood what we believe in regards to energy, they might think that is crazy. I kind of don't want to go there right now. That's fine. Do you? I don't care. I don't. I don't care where we go. Yeah? I go where you go, Steph. I go where you go. Stephanie and I have been together for 368 years. (laughs) This time. This time. (laughs) (laughs) So... Uh, we have worked very hard this week to provide you, the listener, with a much needed, perhaps not at all needed, um, but maybe you didn't even know you needed it, review mm-hmm. of a documentary that was recently released on HBO HQ. Max. It's Max. HBO Max now. Excuse me. They pumped it up. Yeah. Like it's not regular HBO anymore. They maximized it. They maximized yeah, it. By getting a bunch of shit from the past two decades that nobody wants to watch anyways Mm -hmm. and putting it on their streaming platform. Oh, So nobody was asking for all seasons of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but they're now available on HBO Max. I might watch it. Well. This is a story. Oh, Oh, wait, wait, you can't do that on YouTube, right? We can sing. I tried to do that the last time. No, you tried to play something. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see the difference. We can sit and sing all day long. They're like, there's nothing like it. Nobody's <laughs> going to mistake that. Yeah. No, but we watched a documentary this week, and mm-hmm. we're going to review it this episode. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I am too. I'm excited for everybody to um, get our take mm-hmm. on it. Yeah? I think we're just going to get into it. Okay. Unless you have something else. I don't know. No? Uh, so the documentary that we watched was called... Do you have to look it up? Uh, I'm going to look up some information. Oh. Is that should okay? I should I talk while you Google? I'm not Googling. I'm just going just to our silly. HBO Max app. I'm getting nervous because I know we're getting into a difference of opinions here, and I'm right, <laughs> and it's really hard to like sometimes rein this guy in. So this series that we watched, this documentary, I think it's going to be a series too. It seems like they're probably going to do a season two. Do you? Yeah, they totally oh. cliffhangered it. Well, they did. I thought like they were all just really saying good documentaries. How, well, there's already other. Um, platforms like stars had one they there's other platforms that have spinoffs of it you know what we should continue oh, to God, do 
uh, we should continue to talk about it without mentioning it. Would you like me just to say what it is? (laughs) The vow. (laughs) Hey, that was the big reveal. And I can't find it. Surprise! Anywhere on the app. Yeah? Uh, Yeah, we watched The Vow. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't heard of The Vow, that's why I was looking for it, because I was going to read the description. Oh. Um, I guess I'll just search it. I'll just search it. That's crazy. Search bars. You have no idea what a big moment this is. Did you see how fast that came up? Mm -hmm. It's nuts. Okay. No, no, no. I'm g- I'm gonna get into that just a little bit. How many times when it com- we look for a show? Sorry, I know I bumped it. It's all right. I'm still gonna keep going. Uh, bump Don't. Your mic all you want. That's see. Look, I just manhandled your mic. But now I have to look down to talk. Look down. <laughs> look down. Maybe I'll just pop it. Pause. Is that okay? That's perfect. Is it? Let's keep what about touching that? it. Tip it over a little bit. If stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't mean to do that. That You're part fine. was an accident. We'll be looking for a show and you will scroll through and you'll just like, cause you don't want to hit the search bar. And so you'll sit there and just like keep going through like the featured or whatever, or whatever, like group because you don't want to type it in the search bar. Instead of just searching for it. Just real quick. Is that a problem? You, it's funny because it would take like three letters for it to pop up. And instead we're like three minutes of scrolling because God damn it. You will not search, but you just searched. Well, we're on a podcast, so we have to look professional. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, this is the description for the docu series. They're calling it a documentary series. Which, I don't think you really realize the big, the prof- not the profanity. <laughs> there is some profane things. Not in this series. All but right. All anyways, right. this right. documentary series from Oscar nominated, blah, blah, blah. Uh, follows members, God damn it! follows members who joined the self-improvement group. Nexium. Nexium. Its leader, convicted of sex trafficking and racketeering conspiracy, among other crimes, to reveal the emotional toll of unfolding events on these individuals. It says he was convicted uh, in the description? Yeah, they do a terrible job. If that's a terrible description. We never read the description. Uh, I the, saw a little blurb of it. A blurb? Uh-huh. The Vow is a docu-series. Um, covering the cult, uh, it's definitely a cult. Mm. Nexium, right? Or ESP. Or ESP is the subset. ESP is the. I don't even know what ESP it's had is. too. It was like executive, social people. <laughs> no, and then I don't remember. I don't remember. He had two. He had one, and then he changed it to something else. If I remember correctly, I may be wrong. Well, we're going to get ahead of ourselves. We don't need to go through and tell the entire story of the show. We're just reviewing it. Okay. Um, And you can watch it to learn more. But the founder of this organization, I'm going to find his name. Keith Keith? Rainieri. 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 Rainier. I I I keep thinking Rainier. I keep thinking Rainier. Rainier. But it's not. It's I think it's Rainieri. Yeah, whatever. It's R A. Yeah, it's Rainier. Who cares? <laughs> You're Sorry. all over bumping. I'm trying to adjust my body. My back hurts so bad. Oh, so I'm like away. trying to kick it on the chair and that hurts. So Adjust okay. away. So Keith Ranieri founded this organization back in the early 2000s. And we want, like the first episode, like any good documentary about a cult, leads you to think this is a great cult. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this cult. I want to be a member of this cult. And that's very much what we were thinking. We're like, this seems great. You're like, I know this is going to turn, but right now, like, I'm, right I'm now, curious because can we still I'm sign finding up? it enticing <laughs> and that's, that's troublesome. Like we know that the founder of it went to prison, but does, is there like, still a branch close by that we can go and check out and go to their meeting? Like it sounded like a really good idea. I was also wondering if it was, um, I had the, the possibility that it was just going to be judgmental. That maybe it really was a good thing, but people, Ooh, people and so it was just, we're just like, going to invest oh, millions of dollars sex, in an so HBO. therefore it's bad. And well, we're going to get into that. I'm just saying from the, from the beginning, I was like, maybe it's going to be fun to watch and maybe they're just misunderstood. Mm-hmm. That's what I went into it. So I'm not going to go to any seminars ever because apparently I might think like, well, that might be a good idea. <laughs> I'm just going to not. Not just for this cult, but any seminars Any, any at seminars. All? No, I'm just going to, I've learned a little bit about myself and like, I'm just, nope, I'm just going to opt You're out right now. You're a little susceptible. I'm not susceptible. <laughs> Yo, this is a great idea. I just think I like you talk about selling. sex and energy and I'm like, 
sex and energy. <laughs> I don't think they were talking about... It sounds about, like a fun Friday. They were, <laughs> <laughs> so the beginning of the cult started out as a self-help organization designed to enhance people's um, self-confidence, their ability to get what they want in life, uh, interact with people. Um, how else would you describe how they sell their shit? Uh, the market, the exact market for every self help avenue out there. Who's yeah. participated in those? <laughs> Raise your hand. Good number of us. Raise your hand. <laughs> uh, I just itching my eyes. I'm uh -huh. not raising my hand. Yeah, we've both not that one. Like we we don't have like next Sam manuals somewhere like oh shit <laughs> better put that away. But it was really interesting that first little bit of realizing that oh this has got some foundation of some good stuff. Anybody who's ever read a self help book ever it can fall into that. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who's wrote a self help book? Yeah, because the next thing you know you sign up for that person's. Um, belief system because there's or their yeah. bill of goods that they're trying to sell mm -hmm. and this, this is was, why this will work yeah this is very much that guy's bill so, of goods that mm -hmm. he's trying to sell and it was really clear too for me at least i don't know how soon we or how quickly you caught on probably not as soon as i do do you realize as as how minimizing they were of women through the whole thing did it this rub off a little do. bit You're like i don't know how, how fast this dumbass caught on no, 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 i no, figured no. it out from the get-go no but she's a little slow <laughs> what was really Sweet. obvious to me was the um, multi-level marketing scheme that was at play. Yeah, you said that several times. From the very beginning. I think they said it too. Well, they didn't say it until oh. episode seven or eight or something like that. You're right. You were you were on it from the get-go. Well, it was obvious yes. that he was just clearly creating a pyramid scheme mm -hmm. <laughs> where he was at the top, insulated by a harem of sex women, and everybody else below them were out there, the ones making the money and getting more people to participate. And he just got to sit back and play volleyball. Do you think you've been a part of a cult? Not up, up, but like where you've like, you've been a part of the ranks of making money for the. For the people above? Yeah. I don't think so. I think I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of a group right now and I'm like, I'm glad I started seeing some things that didn't really match about that. And I stopped participating. Well, you know, I'm not going to name it. We've definitely but been. But it's pretty similar. I'm like, mm, that's going to be in the news one day. <laughs> We've definitely participated <laughs> in multi-level marketing schemes. I still have. MLMs are only designed. Not every MLM is a cult. Every, not every MLM is a cult, but every no. MLM. MLM mm -hmm. is designed. To make the people at the very, very top mm -hmm. all the money. All the money. And then everybody below them makes little to no money at all. And this was no different. Yeah. So the way that their program worked was... You go to one of their seminars and you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And they're like, great. Come back for the five day whatever and bring somebody. And then eventually you just get sucked into this process where they have a whole um, uh, matriculation is a big fancy word, but kind of this whole program where you can move up. And instead of belts like uh, martial art belts, which they did refer to I also well. called out at some yes, point did. that uh but instead of martial art belts and, and then you the were color like, to show hierarchy and whatnot uh they just wore silk scarfs Sashes. so that's right <laughs> it was very very um with stripes <laughs> <laughs> it was very uh in interesting it was interesting is a good word for it <sighs> So you go through and you get your sashes and you become a, a lead, a team lead, a, a trainer, a super trainer, uh, just continuing up the, the ranks. Mm -hmm. And surprise, surprise, hardly ever making any money yeah. while continuing to spend a lot of your own money and only making that guy rich. So that's initially what it seems like is the mm -hmm. problem, right? It seems a little shady. It seems a little off. It seems a little weird. At one point, they go back in time and talk about uh, this guy, Keith, back in the 80s and 90s, where he founded a very, not even like a <laughs> pretend to be anything else other than a multi-level marketing uh, business. Mm -hmm. And it was very successful until he got charged with a bunch of crimes because he was basically just taking all the money and not paying anybody. Yeah, he stopped paying and they were like, something's off. Yeah. And um, so then he just shifted gears mm -hmm. and created this whole new thing 
called Nexium slash ESP, which is the program that you go through. And then just got a bunch of really fucking stupid white people to pay him a bunch of money and continue down the path of his um, insane, maddening control over everything. I don't think they're stupid. I think some are stupid. I don't think they're stupid. Oh, baby. I think, <laughs> I think they were hopeful. There was a bunch of stupid white people. Okay. I, I felt sad for a lot of them because I could see how you um, get sucked in, get sucked in. And then in, like there's so much to go with, like when you're not what you're doing isn't working. So you're looking at doing something new. And so when you get into that mindset, that's easy to be like, OK, let's try something different. And they're so good at that what indoctrination at that um, manipulation at that so good they just hit on that one thing and it starts to and then before you know like how many how many times have you caught yourself like down a path of like how the fuck did I get here when if you would have looked at it here where you're at you probably wouldn't have made that step but this little step seemed okay and then this little step seemed okay and then this little step to uh oh <laughs> Oh, I'm in a sex cult. <laughs> well, maybe not that exact path, but like it's, I don't look at them like you're dumb. I look at them like. Boy, I don't know. I don't know. See, that's where we differ on that because I have. I don't look at them like they're dumb either. For but them. I I'm look like, at that's them like really sad. They're kind of dumb. Like they kind of made some really clear, obvious choices. Right. Yes, they did. That. I don't know. I don't know how you they can not see it. Really? <laughs> the guy is fucking weird. Yes. Yes. So yes, the way yes. that he sells himself. He is very like, I don't see how he had any of this because it's just like. Yeah. yeah, he's a little creepy, greasy, dweeby guy. Yeah. But he sells himself as this highly intelligent, like. That's why he uses the women so much well, because the, the women did a good job and then they see him and it's like. What's the, like they, he, like in the beginning, they were talking about like all of his accolades, like he's one of the top three most intelligent people in the world or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something or, like that. Like he's incredibly intelligent, like a savant almost. And very humble. And <laughs> humble, <laughs> uh, a black belt in judo, um, concert pianist. Yeah. Um, the list of his accomplishments were going on and on and on. And yeah. the really interesting thing about this series was. They have so much archival footage that was shot and filmed of the of the cult, of the organization, of their meetings, of their interpersonal work, of their like parties, of their ceremonies, just like so much footage over the past like 20 years, 15, 20 years that the entire series is sparsed with on top of people mm -hmm. who have left the cult mm -hmm. and can speak to the entire experience over the course of that 15, yeah. 20 years. So that's really interesting because it's not like they're talking about him abstractly. You're literally watching him yeah. on camera. And that's the part that I'm like, how could you not see that this guy was just full of shit? I mean, I have a really oh. good bullshit meter, I think, but it's like, it's pretty obvious. The guy's is full obvious. of shit. But what they do is they, they know, they take everything that you're going to feel towards him and they tailor the program to to all of those resistances that you're going to have, all of those instincts that you're like, nope. <laughs> and they start telling you how in the beginning, like pointing that out. So you start to see when you have those feelings about somebody, how you're wrong. So they start programming you immediately that you're wrong. This is how you can be better. This is how you're weak for thinking like this in a few steps. So they tailor all of those reactions that you're going to have. So when they come up, they're like, See? Oh, so you didn't learn anything. Oh, you're done. You're still going to be held back. And then you're like, oh. And so they, they're. Yeah. They, they, and they, they, when they have the women that come off and that are like, um, I love you and so happy to see you. And you feel when you have women that are getting welcomed by women like that, because that community is hard. So when you feel that woman bonding, you're going to gravitate. And then you give a woman, given a man attention. And they are also going to gravitate because we have attractive woman that's showering with all this affection and building and come on. I mean, it's a perfect fucking scheme. By the way, this is all spoiler alerts. Sorry. Um, yeah, Did I go you, too far? Not at all. We're not done. I think far. you said convicted at the beginning. So well, you easy. know how it ends. That's the very first 
I mean, as soon as you post pl push play on the documentary, that's the first thing they talk about is how he's convicted. Oh, I missed that part. I yeah. saw a sex cult and I thought, is it going to be sexy? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a good sexy sex cult. I, I'm not that familiar. Like, <laughs> You know what I'm really in the mood I was for hopeful. tonight? It's just a good documentary on a sexy sex cult. Not a weird one. Not a not a crazy one. There's also people. Just a good one. There's We have... <laughs> we have a sex life that other people may judge and not understand. So I think are they just no, they're not misunderstood. It's it's not okay. No, this one was definitely not. It's, There's it's other bad. sex cults out there that I'm sure are just fine. Where? Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> I just I've googled. Have you? We're gonna, we've got a trip next week. Where are we going? Um, Is it Albany? Al <laughs> no. He. They do a wonderful job of designing the program to basically flip the human nature, the human response that we mm -hmm. would all have and use it against yourself. Perfect gaslighting. Yeah, where it's like you're really you're going to feel this way. Everybody feels this way. Everybody thinks this is a little strange in the beginning. That's normal, mm -hmm. right? But then we move past that because that is really just a block and a filter that you're seeing the world through and we're trying to get to deeper things and expose more about who we truly are and our true nature. And then you've got all these people. And if you don't, you're wrong and bad and this is where you're not enough and that's fine. We don't want you anyways because you're not good enough. So his like number two, this lady named Nancy Salzman, her name I can remember. Um, I don't know why. I think I explained that. <laughs> no, but she was a therapist. Mm -hmm. And she was also an NLP practitioner, not just a practitioner, but a master practitioner. Like she was an NLP trainer. So people that aren't familiar with that acronym. I kind of wish. Kind of wish what? Keep going. People that aren't familiar with that acronym. Tell me. No. Uh -uh. um, NLP stands for neural, neural, neuro, neuro, <laughs> neuro linguistic programming, which is a terrible name. Because it That's why they call immediately it insinuates that they're programming your brain. But um, you and I both are familiar with NLP. and It does make me question it now, though. <clears throat> now well, I get nervous. Now I'm like, isn't that It's like anything else badge? where you it, you know you can take a good thing and use it for uh, with bad intentions. True. And this woman was very – it was very clear to me watching her immediately and seeing her speak and all this Ooh, different footage yeah. that that's exactly what she was doing. Because NLP has a she very did. unique way of communicating with people and explaining things. And they pose, I don't know if you noticed this too, like he would pose a lot of rhetorical questions. Okay. So he would say a lot of things. I don't know if you know, quit talking down to me. I don't know if you <laughs> noticed this stupid woman. <laughs> this is just stuff that stood out to me. Or now you, are you afraid for my safety? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, that might be a good idea. <laughs> I got to give you a heads up, baby. <laughs> You're going to go down to Solberg's and end up in a sex cult. Um, no, but they pose a lot of open-ended rhetorical questions. And the questions, oh, they don't like really give you a, an opportunity to respond. They basically give you just enough time to sit with the question because they're asking the question to an elicit uh, an emotion. And then they give you the answer. So then they reaffirm what you're feeling. And so then suddenly you're like, oh my God, they know me so well. I have to trust this person because yeah. they know how I think and feel. And really it's like, I mean, it's like what they do with um, hypnotize or hypnotism, not hypnotism, um, cold reading. Have you ever heard of cold reading cold before? Cold reading? No. Like the uh, people that pretend to be mediums. Um, oh. John, Al not John Oliver. He's uh, <laughs> John Edwards. John Edwards. They cold you read think a he's crowd. a phony? Well, they, they say, um, who's got somebody, somebody's got an ant, an ant that's got, um, starts with a J, uh, some sort of name, J, G, J, and somebody's like, am I Aunt Jenny? Yep, that's it. That's her. So they ask these questions that undoubtedly are going to elicit a response. And so both him and Nancy throughout, as you watch the footage, that's exactly what they're doing. And that's what they trained people to do, was elicit an emotional response with a question that fits Everybody, everybody, right? Everybody struggles with you self. You have been susceptible as well. Very much you so. You bought into stuff. I'm yeah. just pointing at I'm not the sitting woman. here pointing at you. I'm just pointing You're at her. Like, you fool. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can start naming some stuff for you too, mister. No, no, it's not you at all. Don't take it personally, babe. I'm not. Um, it's I'm just... not triggered. <laughs> <laughs> We've been watching this all week long. It's like nine uh, episodes or something like that. Yeah. And so um, about... So Maybe long. two episodes in, we're like, oh, we're going to have to talk about this on the podcast. 
So then I just held my tongue the entire time with I a didn't. bunch of shit that I wanted to talk about as we're watching everything. I can't do that. And so now it's just Clearly. all coming out. <laughs> but did you notice that at all? That you were sitting, yeah, I would no, ask no. you, like, why? what's that face? Not that I would sit there quietly. They're open-ended questions. They're open-ended questions. That, or they're closed-ended questions. No, like they're rhetorical questions that have. Yeah, but I feel have... like that's a closed-ended question because there's no answer other than the one they want you to have and the one that they're going to provide to continue that manipulation. It's not open. It's closed. Okay. You're being led. See? There you go. You're a great NLP practitioner already. <laughs> <laughs> That was really fascinating to me. And so this guy wasn't some genius that had hacked. That's the way that they sold it, too, that he had, like, solved these great mysteries yes. of life and suddenly had this new technology. They referred to it as fucking technology a lot. Did you catch that? Yeah. Where that was, like, his tech that he discovered. And That's basically right. he created this new technology for hacking the human mind and the human body so that we can maximize our potential. That would have probably stood out if I was buying it, but oh, because I it was in. like, no, you didn't. I bought the books. They're on their way. <laughs> I did that. No. Um, I guess that didn't really stand out because it was already that like, Ugh, that yeah. creepy, which is why you can't meet him for a while. We see him pretty fast and we get that creepy. But when you're there, it, you have to really earn. You have to get up before you can meet him. That's true. Because if you meet him right off the bat, you're like, mm, that's true. so gross. Yeah. He definitely structured it in a way where. Um, first off, he was referred to as Vanguard. From that was his like. Theme, didn't you that? that was what it, that's. He had some other pretend reason why it was Vanguard because Vanguard means something in history or language or something like that. But yeah, it was just off of a fucking arcade game in their garage back in the eighties. Um, but you're right; they structured it in a way where you didn't get to meet him for a very long time, mm -hmm. and so you get indoctrinated into the program. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy's a genius. He's created all this amazing stuff that these people are teaching you and selling you. And then eventually you do get to meet him. And by that point, you're already like, oh, my God, he's so amazing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's done all of these great things. And if you sit there and talk about people, you have to remember, too, that this was like in the early 2000s, even though it went all the way up until. Busted, like 2019, wasn't it? Is when he got. Yeah, or I mean, it, it went 18? all the way up into like 2017, 2018, 2019. Yeah. And, um, but in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. the internet was still a baby. Yeah. And so the idea that it was very easy, I think, for people to, we don't, we didn't use the internet the same way that we use it today. Right. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> What's that duck face? What's going With on? With duck face? What? Hmm. No, I was just like, yeah, we did not use the internet the same way in the early 2000s as we do today. Is that one of those rhetorical questions? Because I'm like, you're right, we did. God, you're such a genius, Chris. So like, <laughs> Tell me more, <laughs> Vanguard. <laughs> um, there were so many weird things about the entire thing, and they did a good job of unfolding the weirdness as it went on. And then it actually reached a point where I'm like, you were done. I was done. I'm like, oh my God, I, I can't watch it. This is so dumb. I don't want to watch any more of this. And then the very next episode, they like revealed more weirdness that I'm like back in because I'm like, oh my God, this just got even weirder. Because initially it seems like it's just a weird organization that is kind of controlling. And then if you want to leave, it is an issue. But it's not like... I don't know if you've watched any of the stuff or read any of the stuff or heard any of the stuff about Scientology and what it's like for them when they leave. Yeah, no, because I know enough to know. No. <laughs> Sorry. You can watch a documentary on it. Mm, I know Does enough to know. Does it mean that suddenly you're a Scientologist? I agree. Um, it gives me, I don't know. If things make my stomach twist and turn in that ucky, I don't really seek out that information because I know that doesn't feel good and be around. So I don't want to be like, mm, like I'm going to throw up. Let's <laughs> give me some more of that. Um, so it mirrors slightly the whole thing around Scientology, even though it's not a religion. But if you try to leave Nexium or leave ESP, then they tend to come after you with a bunch of lawsuits. Is that what they lawsuits. do in Scientology too? Yeah, they kind of destroy your life if you leave Scientology. Jesus. Because so we're going to see in like 2030 how they all go down for sex trafficking and cults and, and all Scientology? that as well. I mean, it's the same thing, right? 
there's already documentaries out about it all. But they're going to uh, go You know, Leah uh, Remini. Yeah. Leah Remini. She's the, like, that would be the only documentary I would watch just because I like her. Her. And yes, I know, but she got out, didn't she? Yeah, she got yeah. out, but and she's she... making it her mission to destroy them because of how terrible they are. Ooh, I will watch it then. Maybe yeah. she needs some. She's got a lot of really good information out there right now about that's it. So all. sad. See, that's so sad. Okay, we're getting off track. No, but like, we're not. Are they women being branded? I don't hold on. branded. What? Oh my goodness! Gosh, here we go. Into the deep end of the Were vow. we going to get there? We were going to get there. Yeah, I was okay. getting there. Okay, we'll continue. I was now getting they're there just now. Like, well, the people that were like, okay, I'm done hearing about the vow. Now they got some more weird shit like you. And they're like, wait. Branded. What's going to happen? Wait. Yeah. Now, so, now they're going to keep listening. It's hard to leave. And they make it difficult for you after the fact, even though it's just an organization that helps people, right? But what happens is... This guy, Keith, creates an internal organization within the organization, a secret organization within the organization that is ran and operated by women. Specifically, he, it's never like outright clear, but it's very clear that what he does is he basically brainwashes this actress. Her name's Allison, Allie, Allison Mack. Mack. Um, Famous actress. She was in a movie, or not in a movie. She was in a series, Smallville. And um, she goes and gets indoctrinated into the system and into this cult and eventually becomes the leader of this secret organization that is running behind the scenes of everything. And the org they call it DOS, D-O-S. And um, I don't even know, I mean, from the sounds of it, because they talked to a woman who was also like a lifelong member of this organization and who was up at the very top levels of it. And she became a member of DOS. And initially is like, they sell it to each other secretly in a sense of like, hey, this is another part of what we're doing. And we're trying to create um, kind of a secret society for women in support of one another, as well as going out into the world and kind of the way that I interpreted it was kind of controlling things from behind the scenes, like secret men societies have done over the years, but just doing it from the perspective of female empowerment as opposed to the patriarchy and the control that men have. Yes. And then it was also playing because the whole program is set upon climbing up that MLM. And so this is just another level of that which is kind of like the in and the bed. like you're more um valuable you have more worth you've climbed up higher so it's also that your whole goal is to climb up in the company to get to that and inner this circle. is that inner circle that is the ultimate inner circle and on top of it it is so just woman empowerment yeah that is their <clears throat> thing is women empowerment and isn't that what it's all about so they very good at that twisty come on in yeah, and so Keith manipulates everything from behind the scenes and pretends that he has no knowledge or information or, I mean, he basically signed off on DOS, but then they did whatever they wanted yeah. to do and took it wherever they wanted to go. And in order to become a member of DOS, you have to submit some, they have a special word. Collateral. Collateral. Uh, basically, you just have to give them dirt on yourself that they can then use against you in the event that you want to get out of DOS. Big so, dirt. I mean, it was like nude pictures or your deepest, darkest secret, or let's record a video of you talking about your family in a negative way, or um, just all of this really asinine stuff, even to the point of like, send me the deed to your house. Yeah. So we have that over your head. And then once you realize that's the case and you do it, then they explain to you what it is, and suddenly you're in They don't a... start with due to your house. That's further on. You have to continue throughout <laughs> after you've already given them that little bit of collateral yeah, to like get in. Yeah, either weekly they or monthly. They make it small. It's still big, but that little bit, and if you have resistance, then that's, again, that flip of like, oh, this is where you are failing, and so you push past that resistance because you're trying. So they really manipulate that, and then you give that little bit. They've already got that collateral then. And then they're like, you signed up. So every week you keep giving more and more and more and more because they've structured it in such a way that as soon as you're in, you're already drowning and you don't even know. And it's also um, 
they do like this weird submissive slave thing where you have to refer to the woman that introduced you into the uh, into the secret society or the secret group as master and you're her slave and you have to do everything that she tells you to do. And you identify as that. Yes. It's not even just like a, this is what it's like. It's like, those are the direct names, master, slave. Yeah. And then there's a lot of like. For women empowerment. Women empowerment. And then there's a lot of like weight control where basically it's count your calories and get as thin as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Once again, we use the dynamic of that is like the utmost challenge to our minds and to our bodies and look at how strong you can be and all these kind of different things when really that purpose is just Keith likes skinny fucking women. That's all. Mm -hmm. And so it's incredibly disgusting and gross and insane. And behind it all, Oh, at one point they brand them. Mm-hmm. There's a ceremony. That's where... how you, that was your big buildup. Oh yeah. At one point. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't think okay, that the this branding is, why it's is a, like. It's a big fucking deal. Well, it's a big deal, but it's also not like, oh my God, they, bra- they branded It's a women. big fucking deal. Okay. <laughs> it's a big fucking deal. <laughs> I guess it's a big deal. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big fucking deal. There's a ceremony where they brand you down by your uh, vagina and the symbol that they brand you with is secretly the, the initials. Elements. <laughs> yeah, they, you know, that's the uh, lie that they tell you, but mm-hmm. the reality is it's the initials of Allison Mack and Keith uh, Ranieri in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. So they brand you Because you were their, their property. Yeah. So it's very interesting. And then it's also, it's not a an excited thing. It's a secret thing. So you get there, you don't know what's happening. And it's just that it keeps building and building and building to where now you're there. What are you going to do? Are you going to keep going forward? Because if you're not, and then they hold women down that are scared. And then if you happen to be a higher up like this one girl, they're like, you need to set the example. You need to, it is, it's a big deal because you do not feel like you have any other choice. There wasn't. Mm-mm. You're right. It does. I'm sure it felt like that for all of them or for the majority of them, that they didn't feel like they had another choice or another option, especially if you look at the course of being indoctrinated over, you know, the past years. five or 10 years or whatever the case may be. So it's, it's insane. It's very, very crazy to me. Yeah. There were different parts too that stood out. Um, <sighs> this Damn it. was a small organization that was really only seven or 800 members. Uh, seven or 800 people involved in it. Um, And I thought that was really fascinating, right? Even though they had centers located kind of across the country and in Canada, and they had one down in Mexico. um, It was kind of like the coastline and then Vancouver and Mexico. Yeah. Uh, They had centers, but those centers were really, I think, just about uh, having a space to do trainings and things like that so that people could come through and go through the program. But just because you went through the program didn't necessarily mean that you were part of the organization or part of the cult in a sense, right? So um, that's where that's where I asked, like, do you think we participated in that? <laughs> Got one company. I really think it's going to show up because I'm like, that is really fucking freaky. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then it all comes crashing down when enough people get out of the organization and then kind of work together to take down the organization. And eventually get law enforcement involved and the FBI involved. And then they pursue charges against the leader who fleeds, who fleds, flies. He just flies. He's a flies. warlock. He gets on his broom when he flies to Mexico. He's a vanguard. <laughs> and then he's arrested. And at the end of the story is, of course, he was convicted of all these crimes like racketeering and human trafficking and... um. Co- coercion and all these different things and now he's been put away for 150 years so he'll die in prison yeah yeah but because of the system allison mack at least from the last article that i read was uh she's still on house arrest and she's still waiting her sentencing which she could be sentenced for up to like 80 years for what she she took a plea deal and so she got um charged with i think is racketeering and um, 
like attempted, she got racketeering and attempted racketeering or something like that. I would have to look it up, but basically her sex trafficking charges went away. So, but she can get 40 for each of those. She's still waiting. This was like 2018 and she was supposed to be sentenced in 2019 and then COVID. So because of COVID, she's still at home on house arrest and there is no sentencing. How is she not a victim too in your mind? Oh, she's absolutely a victim too. Right. But. So what is it about her that, I mean. No, I'm just fascinated at the fact that um, she's rich and white and is, doesn't have a sentencing date as to where that would not be the case if she didn't have those little factors, a rich white woman. She would not be sitting at home with her little bracelet living her life because COVID is scary. At her mom's house. At her mom's house. Yeah. So that's my, like, just just of that dynamic when everybody else went, I think she is absolutely a victim. However, however, what she still did it. She, she, she still did do it. So the, the thing that she's accused of doing throughout mm -hmm. the show is being the leader of DOS and that's a pretty big manipulating deal. women into the organization and into the secret society. Mm -hmm. And obviously eventually everybody just ends up sleeping with, um, Vanguard, everybody ends up having sex with the leader. And that's for the whole, exactly. That's the whole purpose of obviously everything for this man is mm -hmm. just to have sex with these women. And he and degrade women. manipulates it in such a way so that they eventually, you know, have starved themselves down to like a hundred pounds and all sorts of different stuff. And, and there's a part in the later episodes of the series where they start to talk about and show some of the trainings that they did that were focused on, because they had two organizations within the organization that this guy was just a genius at creating fucking shit for Being people to get involved with. Right. Um, they had two organizations that were, one was female based and one was math or man based, male based. And so they were like organizations within the organizations that would focus on just women's stuff and just men's stuff. And um, it was really fascinating, I think on some level, but they would do group trainings and he would sit up at the front in front of like a group of women or in front of a group of men and women and just start to talk mad shit about f women and females and the way that they have basically, I mean, I, I can't even begin to like recount everything that he said. There was okay. so much shit. Yeah, it was bad. About degrading women and the way that they act and the way that they behave and it's all your fault and look what you've done and all these different things over the course of history and this is why men are the way that they are because of women and on and on and on and on and on. And then he would be like, I'm just saying this is the way that it is. I'm not saying that this is exactly how I feel, right? He's like, I might trigger you guys with these words, but I'm not saying- This is how we heal that. Right. I'm just bringing this up so that you can bring awareness to it within yourself. I'm not mm -hmm. really this incredibly misogynistic as exactly but this is the way it is and then go into the next rant about <laughs> how they're sluts and how if you guys didn't dress provocatively and how if you didn't cry and all these different things how on and on and men on hate you all oh yeah like if you like, wear a tight shirt we're gonna all of them are gonna oh that was one of the levels that you all would be grabbed your tits would be grabbed and well yeah like i don't know what that what he was referencing there but this insinuation was that men just hold themselves back all the time. And if they didn't, if men were allowed to be at a 10, then Where they, would women just, are. they would just walk around and grab breasts all the time. Basically <laughs> rape everybody right. constantly. Cause that was, yeah. And that was when everything started to really crystallize for me of like, it's that not that I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was like the final thing of recognizing how fucked up this guy was. Yeah. It's not that I needed it. It was just really interesting to me. Like it was so clear. I've met men that think that way about women. I've met men that treat women that way, both outwardly to some degree, and then behind closed doors, think about women in that regard. So that isn't new for me to encounter that in the space of men and masculinity. It's not new for women either. <laughs> We're aware <laughs> that think like that. Um, but men, I think, that have that strong of a belief system in regards to women and treat women in that way, shape, and form 
are severely fucked up from a very early age. Yeah. Like, it, I have no doubt that this guy had some insanely bizarre relationship with his mother. Yeah. Like, there has to be something there. I'm not... Obviously, that doesn't negate his behavior and actions. I'm not trying to do that in any way, shape, or, or form. Or he just watched a father be incredibly horrible to the mother and... The fa- no. No. You know? You 100% sure? Well... How do you know? First off, we're not excusing away his actions or behaviors. No. It's just... Very sure? I'm very sure, Stephanie. <laughs> I'm very, very fucking sure. Well, I just love how you immediately make it the mother's fault. I'm like... It's blaming not, women. Huh? I, I'm not blaming the mom Sign. at all. There, there isn't an issue <laughs> okay. at all. It, for me, it's just a very intellectually interesting thing to look at people. It's human nature and dynamics and what creates people the way that they are. That guy had some very severe, like psychopathic personality disorder, mental illness issues. Not a, arguing with that. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm always fascinated by what creates that. Yeah. And the way that he spoke about women Mm -hmm. and not just outwardly spoke about them, like Mm -hmm. finally they revealed this in the show in that episode where they show those clips and that footage of him. Before that, you didn't really hear that type of language in regards to the way that he talked about women. Yeah. You could tell by his actions and behaviors and, of course, the whole DOS thing and branding them and controlling them and all that kind of stuff. But to hear him speak about it, it was like, oh, my God. This guy is so fucked up. And it, that level of fucked upness, excuse me, not only, but I believe the majority of time stems from early childhood. So who knows what it was, right? Who knows if his mom was, um, could, maybe he didn't even have a mom. Well, he did. They showed a little, they showed some pictures. I don't know if that boy. was footage of him though. Oh, I think it was. Okay. Right. Um, But I just find that fascinating because it was very clear that he hated women and was literally controlling and manipulating and punishing them throughout his entire life. Yeah. And as soon as any woman stood up to him, he eventually, like, he just casted them out. Like, they had a lot of his ex girlfriends um, that they interviewed. He didn't cast them out, he tortured them. Yeah. I mean, he tortured. In what way? Like, you, I mean, if we're talking about branding and now we're going to say the word torture, okay. it's insinuating that he's got them locked in a basement and he's... He tried to stop them from leaving. And when they would leave, he would go after them insanely, like charge after charge after charge, try and come up with so many. So they are can like ruin like 200 charges of whatever. So yes. he's legally terrorizing them, ruining them, taking everything away. And it's rumored now, I read, like this isn't... This isn't a thing. This isn't where he's being charged. This wasn't charged. in the documentary. This wasn't in the documentary. He's not being charged. I don't know if like it fits, but I have no idea. It's just something they're suspecting is that the, he had a few women around him that died when they said committed suicide. Um, a couple of them had cancer and they started to do blood tests and finding poisons in some of the ones with cancer. So now it's suspected on one article, whether it's true or not, I don't know, that he's possibly... Um, had been poisoning them. So whether that comes out or not, I don't know. It fits. It you does can fit. see it, but I don't know if that's true or not. And it also fits in the way that he, because he lived with a harem of like nine women. Yeah. That were like his, basically just his circle of women that he was in a relationship both mm-hmm. outwardly to some extent and then also intimately with sex and all sorts of different stuff. And they all knew about it and everything like that. And if you just look at it as far as like consenting adults, everybody gets to do whatever they want to do. That's fine. But it's fine until you can't leave, until you're poisoned theoretically, so that part, until you're controlled and manipulated. That's not fine. I wish they would have talked about that in the documentary. Yeah. Because I don't know if it came out at that point. It may not. Have. I have to find that article. But again, I don't know if it's true. So it was to, just something on the internet. That, when you brought that up last night when we finished, um, that to me is Munchausen. And that makes perfect sense if he had some sort of aspect of that in his childhood with his mother that he was just going to then repeat that cycle in a way to take back control. And do you know what I mean? So that makes sense to me, whether or not none of this is fact, all of this is just speculation, yeah. but yeah. in our opinion, of course, cause it's our podcast, but yeah. Um, These parts are opinions. Yeah. What else? Is there other stuff that stood out to you that um, you want to talk about? Anything else that you want to bring up? 
I think, um, I feel a lot for all the people under him, all the people that I do like, it's such a slippery slope. The only one I don't feel that I hold just a, as accountable is N Nancy. I don't know her last name. All Salzman. I, all I could think of was Pelosi and I'm like, that's not it. <laughs> 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 but she is like, she may have came in at that, but that, that level of evil of when you know what's happening and you bring your daughter in and she kept her daughter in and had that. I'm like, you like, at what point that's just, she's just as she's the, and she was his, number like right there she was she was one. the number two so yeah her but I she hope. was also the founder she co-founded the organization mm -hmm. with him so the idea that she's going to bring her daughter into a sex cult she didn't see it as a sex cult she saw it as this incredible empowering thing at one point i'll give that but as soon as you see your child being hurt like i don't care how fucking brainwashed you are when you see your kid getting her the possibility like that flips the switch like nope yeah. And she's like allowing her daughter, like they were both having sex with him. They were both like, she allowed her daughter to be part of DOS part of like, what the f like, no, you know, what's happening. You know, what's happening. There is no way that you would bring your kids into that. Unless you think it's a good thing. Mm. Unless you think it's a good thing. I, I take your instincts over that. If when you see your natural instinct to protect your child, I see that coming in over everything. Yeah, but that's you. Not everybody has that. And mm, I feel like they do. <laughs> I feel like. No, no, no. The part, the, the, the thing is. Only the people that actively hurt their children. No. The, she's just as, she's just like, they, that is, I am right. <laughs> she is just Do as, not think that she was just. Uh, his first victim in a sense to a point at the beginning right but, but you now, can't take it at the beginning and then negate everything after the fact I can't because, because if you are brainwashed choice. at the very beginning we'll just take Allison Mack for example mm -hmm. right it was very clear the way that they portrayed her mm -hmm. in the show and the footage that they showed of her mm -hmm. she shows up to this organization without any self-confidence um, a whole bunch of internal issues mm -hmm. all sorts of like regular shit that everybody deals mm -hmm. with right so she's very susceptible mm -hmm. And then eventually she becomes the quote unquote leader of DOS and is sex trafficking women and trying to get women into the secret organization and branding mm -hmm. them. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a big leap. Yeah. So we go from one end to the other end. At some point she kind of crossed over into this other space Yes. where everything she's doing after that fact is based off of what led her to that point. So if okay. you take a brain, mm -hmm. That is very yeah. moldable and malleable, yeah. right? <laughs> if you take a brain on drugs <laughs> and you throw it in a frying pan and then you eat it, you're going to get mad cow disease. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Hashtag. Um, but her brain is so malleable and her emotions, more importantly, and all of those things, suddenly you're doing things that you would never imagine that you would do. I agree. And you don't have the capacity to step out of it and change it. Because you are now in a... You're trapped. It's not even trapped. Because it's not like they locked them in cages at the end of the day. It's, no, you but are, that emotional trap, that is stronger than iron. Yes. And so now, I mean... I still think she has accountability to be held too. I don't think it's the severity of it. But I think there's some accountability. Just because she needs, like... Things need to be fixed in her brain. And I don't know that it's prison. I feel like she needs Yeah, some... so what if it's mental health? Absolutely. So what if Kathy, the Kathy Carly, what the, Nancy. Okay. Nancy Salzman, the mm -hmm. co-founder. What if she falls under the same category as Mac, Allie Mac? She may, because... but I cannot say it that way because she brought her daughter in to be tortured. That wasn't her goal. That's what happened, though. That was her baby. I cannot see past that. At wow. that point, I'm like, there clearly, if that doesn't trigger her something, her daughter was in charged you, too. Yeah, but I have some, like for her, her daughter. Mm -hmm. I have definitely have more compassion for her, and she needs mental health, not prison. Because you look at her and the situation, all the indoctrinated. My mom brought me in this. My mom wants me to do that. What the hell was that girl going to do? So I don't feel that the criminal charges for her should be there. I feel what like about? she gets lenience and she gets mental health 
and her mother can just go rot in jail the rest of her life. You don't think her mom needs help? I think she does, but why? Just let her rot. Oh my goodness. I know, I'm so fucking Everybody cold. needs help. Well, not at that point. What about Keith? Mr. Ranieri, he needs help. What's the fucking point? Let him rot. <laughs> Those two people, like, no. Nah. <laughs> so we got to lose some. I'm not saying, like, you know, actually, maybe they should. Still, I still, I don't think they should be released. No. But I think they should remain in prison. But they should have hope because maybe that's sad that that's where you're at. But there's also that, like, I don't think they can be helped. I don't ever want them, like, okay, this is fucked up. This is my truth. The only reason I want them to have help is so when they see how wrong they are, they can feel the pain of what they did. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can sit there in that and then yeah, stay in prison with like, oh, my God. So the this the show ends with a big cliffhanger because <laughs> they go through the trial a little bit. They don't yeah. even though they don't go through the trial. It's a really fast it. end. It is. They're like everything, everything. And then, by the way, he goes to prison forever. Yeah, and, then, oh, boom, and the end of it is. They didn't even say how long he got. He just got arrested and was getting charged. And they showed him in prison, but they didn't show him how long. Yeah. And that could have been um, because he had no bail. The, the hairs, they just like, they just no bail. They weren't even risking it. And I think Nancy's was $100 million Yeah. Bell. Did she pay it? Did she get out? Because she showed him. Anyway. It doesn't matter. Um, the cliffhanger at the end of the show is a phone call from prison where Keith Raniere is talking to the people that produced this series. So... Even in, I love, that part made me so happy because it speaks so highly to this fucking asshole and the, cons, like the, the <laughs> people like him, because we've seen these type of shows before and we've heard about these type of organizations and these cults and these things that could pop up and the people that are at the top of them, the leaders of them are so incredibly um, insane that they think even after you've just been arrested extradited from mexico and you know caught by the fbi you still think that you are right it's fucking true <laughs> right you still Jesus. think that you haven't done anything wrong and that you're right and so the so cliffhanger gross. is him calling or i'm sure he probably reached out to them or they... it was a call you heard the the beginning like, it was his that voice it was a yeah collect call a collect call from him from inside prison. prison and he wants to tell his side of the story <laughs> because if they really knew the the whole truth, the whole story, then it would all make sense. Yeah. So there's going to be a season two, undoubtedly. I don't know where they. I don't know if we're going to watch yeah, it. I kind of feel like there's no fucking point. Yeah. But I feel like now we just have. So what if what? one of the things that I want to talk about just as a fun ha ha ha? That's our review of the Val, by the way. That took a really long time. <laughs> Hopefully, we didn't fucking ruin it for oh you. God. Still go watch it. Um. What. Or not. Or not. <laughs> I don't know. I may watch that Scientology documentary now. It's good. I'm going to need some more Alka-Seltzer and some crackers. It's really good. That's bright. Yeah. I She's also, I think she has a podcast. Soup. I don't know if I'm going to take Leah that Leah has in. a podcast, I yeah. think. I should we have her. her on the, should we have her as a guest? She's in Utah. Swing by. Yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll happily Actually, chat with you. Actually, if she's doing like, like that's now her mission is to shine light on it. Mm-hmm. Like that really, like that pulls at me to give her support, give her that voice, give her like just be another person that hears and can spread the word. I don't know yet. I'm going to go watch it. But just because of what we just watched and how hard these women had to fight, like it ended up like the women that left before mm. and they're still just like tortured and bad mouth or financially trying to put their lives together. But it started what ended is that um, Bonnie. Yes. Bonnie she was one of the is first. the one that um her and her husband, who was like the documentarist of whatever, the filmmaker Mark, she before him was like, This is not okay. I gotta get out of this and was trying and so she had to battle with him for a bit before he jumped on. So she was all by herself, alone, risking everything, and then was just strong enough to pull and that's what she did. She was trying to shine light and she and then Mark brought Sarah and people just started seeing it. So like, I don't know, maybe Lee is that Bonnie and I'm like, Oh honey, you need support. I'm not involved at all, but I want to help. I, I want to help. If, I want to give love and a voice to that. I don't know so, if Leah Remini needs our help, but she, I think if you want to go listen people, to her podcast, it's I'm the going to. Leah Remini Scientology in the aftermath podcast. 
you can go listen to that. It's it's just about even if it's just about educating people so more people don't get sucked into that, then that's the help she needs. That's the goal of it, right? Yes. So yeah, I'm gonna go listen. So I don't know if I'll feel the same after I listen. I might be like, mm, <laughs> but I'm gonna listen and see what she has to say. Okay. And then I'm gonna review it. <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna review it on next week's episode. Um Stephanie and I are starting a cult. No, we're not. Yeah, we totally are. We just watched an amazing how-to video on how to do it. We're not branding anybody. Well, hold on. There's not. <laughs> wait, hold on. We're not branding anybody. Okay, what are we going to do? Not what are we not going to do. What are we going to do? What is our cult going to be? I don't even want to joke about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not funny. Fine. <laughs> we're not starting a cult. <laughs> wink, wink. What was what was you said? But we'll be upfront. And you're yeah. like, this is a crazy cult. That's the way to do it. And no, you're not going to have to do like anything you don't want to do. Yes, you can leave it. No, it's not fucking funny. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I think it you was funny when we first started talking about it until we watched the entire series. And now I'm like, it's not funny. It can be a sexy sex cult. We just let people know you're welcome to leave whenever you want. And we're not going to harass you after the fact. We're not going to come after you with lawyers that we don't have. How about we just have friends? <laughs> yes. Can we just We'll have... just call it friends. No. Fans of the you show. You know what? I really don't find it funny, actually. Okay, fine. I really don't. No cult for this couple. A couple's cult? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I don't find it funny. <laughs> I don't find it funny. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. This episode was brought to you by Love Good Fats. <laughs> <laughs> Go to lovegoodfats.com. Get some yummy, delicious, healthy bars and Ooh. enter Energy is Love and save 20% at checkout. That is probably not what they want advertised in No conjunction. way are they affiliated with any cults that we know of. They're not affiliated with any cults and or the vow. Nor that we are, know of. Hey, not that we know of. They're definitely not. It's just they're a company. In Canada. That, okay, that's true. No, they're not. We know what those Canadians. We love you, Canada. We love you, Canadians. Canadians. We got a, people, a lot of people listen up in Canada. Yeah. Good people. When are you going to let people that don't like Trump back in? Mm, yeah. When can we come up? <laughs> like, it's can much you talk better to, up there. Uh, your prime minister and open the border, please. There's a few of us that would like to come and visit. For I will a while. sign a waiver saying I do not support you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole other one. I love you. I love you.